This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll take a look at creating Dolby Digital Audio. We're going to look at the base settings. Before we begin, there's a couple things to know about creating Dolby Digital Surround Sound. First thing is all your source files should be the same length. If they're not, Compressor sets the length of the AC3 stream to match the length of the longest file. All files must have a 48 kHz sample rate as required for the DVD standard. The AC3 streams must have a multiple of 1,536 samples. If the selected input files do not, Compressor will add digital silence to the end of the files. When we are previewing Dolby Digital encoded surround sound files, you have to have an external surround sound device connected to USB, Firewire, or another output from the computer if you want to hear the assigned channels. However, Preview will not include any settings, such as dialog normalization or compression preset settings. Also, we will not be working with Dolby Digital files inside a compressor. Therefore, the optical output cannot be used to verify the audio assigned to each channel. The only way to verify the settings is to submit the batch and listen to the results. If you are unsure of your settings, use the preview window to encode a short portion of the source as a test. You can import an AC3 file as source media into the compressor batch. Compressor includes a built-in Dolby Digital decoder that it uses to decode the AC3 files. This decoder will properly apply any settings you made in the Dolby Digital Professional Encoder pane, and then allows you to hear the effects without requiring you to have an external Dolby Digital decoder. You can also transcode the AC3 files to a different format. However, surround sound AC3 files are downmixed to stereo if you do not have an external surround sound system connected to your computer. Now let's take a look at how to actually get files into compressor and set them up as a surround sound mix. The first option is to add surround sound job. If you don't see the button in the toolbar, choose job, new job with surround sound group. You should see this window. From here, you choose each channel in your surround sound mix. I'll start with the left channel, navigate to Working Files Chapter 5, and choose LC. Continue with the center channel and choose CC, the right channel and choose RC, right surround, choose RS, left surround, choose LS. And finally, the low frequency effects or subwoofer, choose LF, and click Open. Finally, click OK. The inspector now lists all our channels, and our job now has a surround sound group. If we click Preview, and shake the preview window, we can now press the play button. Left channel, center channel, right channel, left surround channel, right surround channel and you should hear all the channels playing back through your headphones. Another way to create a surround sound job, first I'll delete my current job. I'll jump to Finder by pressing Command Tab, then press Command N to create a new Finder window, and navigate to Working Files, Chapter 5. This time I'll select all of my files. Notice at the end of the file I have hyphen C, hyphen L, hyphen LFE, hyphen L lowercase s, hyphen R, and hyphen R lowercase s. When files are named with these extensions, we can drag all the files into our batch window and automatically create a sound group for Compressor 4. Again, back to the inspector, we can see Compressor mapped all of our channels appropriately. Next, I'll create a new setting for Dolby Digital Professional. In the inspector, I have three tabs. Audio, Bitstream, and Preprocessing. The first option, unless you have any other reason for doing so, should always be set to DVD Video. Your other options are DVD Audio and Generic AC3. Generic AC3 will allow you to make changes to some of the grayed out options, especially in the Bitstream and Preprocessing. But for now, keep this set to DVD Video, as you'll probably use DVD Video for all of your projects. Our next option is Audio Coding Mode. This specifies the audio channels of the encoded stream. We can use the Automatic button. 
This will check the files in the surround sound group and assign the streams automatically. In order for this to work, we need to drag our settings to our job. With our target selected, we can now see in the inspector window, the audio coding mode has updated appropriately because we have a left channel, center channel, right channel, and two surround channels. We also have our enable low frequency effects turned on because we have a subwoofer channel. The next option is the sample rate. If you are planning to encode for DVD, you must have 48K selected. As you can see, you can select no other option. Also, the data rate is set to 44.8. This is the default for 5.1 encoding. One minute of AC3 audio takes about 3.3 megabytes of storage space. For stereo encoding, rates of 192 and 224 are typical and will produce good results. But again, you cannot access those data rates unless this is switched over to generic AC3 and automatic is turned off. For now, I'll turn back on DVD video and turn back on automatic. The next option is the bitstream mode. The bitstream mode defines the purpose of the encoded audio material. This information is included in the finished stream and can be read by some decoding systems. For instance, if this is music and effects, audio for hearing impaired, dialogue, commentary, and so forth, we can choose that in the bitstream mode and that will be passed to the Dolby Digital decoder. The next option is dialogue normalization. This specifies the average volume of the dialogue using decibels of full scale or DBFS. The playback device uses this information to maintain similar volume among different AC3 streams. The goal is to make all AC3 encoded audio files to have the same listening level regardless of the source file. If you are unsure of this setting, set it to negative 31, and in the pre-processing tab, make sure this is set to none. The next two tabs, bitstream and pre-processing, should not be modified. Unless you have some technical reason to make changes, they are set for the optimal settings in DVD playback. 